Well, happy Wednesday to you, Landmark Youth. I hope you're having a good week. You're not too bored and you're getting your schoolwork done and you're enjoying time alone with your family and just relaxing. I know you really want to get back to church and youth functions, and I do too. And it looks like there may be an end in sight. There may be light at the end of the tunnel. Here in the next couple of weeks, the elders and, and the ministers and I will be meeting to talk about when we can open back up services, start doing some youth functions. If you haven't heard already, the mission trip that was scheduled for May 31st into early June has been postponed. We've pushed that back to the first week in August, and so we have tentatively planned to have the mission trip during that week. And so we'll kind of cross that bridge as we get closer to it. And also, we're supposed to have Senior Sunday on May 17th, and that's being pushed back as well. Hopefully within a month, once we start meeting again, we'll be able to have that Senior Sunday. I talked with a lot of your guys' parents, and that's what they said they wanted to do. Instead of having some modified version of Senior Sunday, they just wanted to push it back to whenever it was that we could meet together. So as you know, we've been going through a series on Wednesday nights during quarantine 2020 because of the coronavirus. And that series has been focused on a simple question. And that question has been, how am I supposed to blank? And we've looked at different subjects each and every week. We talked about anger. We talked about how we're supposed to treat our parents. We talked about the media that we consume. We talked about Bible study. We talked about baptism. And this week, we're going to continue on in that trend through our series of how am I supposed to and the question that we're going to answer this week is, how am I supposed to get the most out of my youth group experience? And it's a common problem for teenagers in our culture today. Even when I was growing up, I think just the nature of teenagers in general, it's a common problem to feel like you don't fit in, to feel like you don't know anybody, to feel like no one likes you or no one cares about you or to feel real awkward, or to feel like people are judging you. And that's maybe what some of you are feeling when you go to youth group functions, or events, or to Bible classes. And I want you to know that you're not alone. That's a, a pretty typical feeling of teenagers when they're in groups with their peers. That's just the nature of the awkward teenage years, right? And so I want you to know you're not alone in that. And we're going to address the question of how you're supposed to get the most out of your youth group experience today. And we're going to look at five ways that you can be more involved in your youth group, that you can make better friendships and relationships within your youth group, and how you can get the most specifically out of your youth group experience. Because let's face it, we want to get something out of going to youth group functions, right? We either want to draw closer to God, we want to draw closer to the other teenagers within our youth group, we want to draw closer to our youth minister and the leadership within our church, um, we want to learn some principles we can apply to our lives, and we want to do some fun stuff as well. So how can you get the most out of that experience? And we're going to answer that question with five different answers, a list. I don't know why I always like to use lists, maybe that's just how my mind works. But I feel like if the bulk of the lesson is centered around one question, answering that one question is the best way to address it. And I've got five different answers for our question today. The first thing that I think it's very important for you to do if you want to get the most out of your youth group experience is to be at everything the youth group does. Our Bible classes, the trips that we go on, the parties that we have, Roundhouse, which we do on almost a weekly basis, service projects, mission trips, Six Flags, summer camp, backpacking trip. The list goes on and on and on. We have a constant flow of activities and things that we can do together. And most of you, unfortunately, cannot get yourselves to these youth functions. A lot of you can't drive, don't have your own car. And so I know this isn't 100% on you. A lot of it is on your parents to get you there. But it's on you the importance and emphasis that you put on being at those events. 
Are you constantly letting your parents know that you want to be there? Are you telling them how much fun you would have and even showing them the things that you get out of it after the event is over? Be at every event you can possibly be at. Make the most of every opportunity it, that your parents give you to be at youth events. And I'll give you uh, an example and then an illustration that I think do really well and fit this answer perfectly. The first one is an example. And it's again using Megan. She's uh, my best source of material when it comes to uh, examples of, of lessons that I do or questions that I answer. And when she was growing up in the youth group, they went to the Seagaville Church of Christ. And you guys know a lot of the people at Seagaville. We've been doing things with them lately. We plan on continuing to do some more roundhouses with them. We plan on going to camp with them. We plan on doing our summer youth series with them. So you guys should know, if you don't already, the youth group at the Seagaville Church of Christ pretty well. And that's where Megan grew up going. And she was telling me earlier this week as I was preparing for this lesson that when it came to youth group functions, whether it was Bible classes, events, get-togethers, trips, hangouts, in her family, it wasn't an option. There wasn't ever a question of, well, are we going to go to that? Should we? Should we not? It was just they were automatically going to be going to every youth group function. It wasn't an option. Yes, it may have been an event that they didn't necessarily have any interest in or, or want to be at, but it was an opportunity for them to spend time with their friends. And so they wanted to go. And then here's the illustration I want to give you when it comes to being at everything you can possibly be at. And I heard this just this past week in our elders ministers meeting. And I want you to picture a really hot campfire. About as hot as you can get it, pretty big, and you're sitting right in front of that campfire. And it is scorching hot. You can't do, get too close or your leg hairs will singe, your, your eyebrows will singe. Well, I want you to picture this. Let's say you got a really long pair of tongs, and you reach those tongs into the middle of that fire, and you grabbed a coal or a hot ember right out of the center of that fire, and you took it out and you placed it outside of the fire, maybe five or ten feet. Now, what would happen to that ember after several minutes of it sitting outside of the fire by itself? Would it get hotter and hotter and continue to burn? Or would it start to go out and begin to get cooler and eventually not be able to produce heat at all? Well, if you're the type of person that doesn't attend a lot of youth group functions or events or classes, you're just like that hot coal that was taken out of the fire. You have, may have been on fire for God, on fire spiritually, uh, really into God's word. But the second that you take and place yourself outside of the youth group, outside of that hot burning fire, you're going to go out. You're going to get cool. And so it's important for you to be at everything you can possibly be at so you can maintain that fire and that fervor for the things of God. And the teenagers within your youth group, as well as the leadership within your youth group, will help you maintain that fire. And the Hebrew writer tells us in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25, the concerns for neglecting to meet together with the body of Christ. In our examples here, we're talking about the youth group, but this could apply to any church member. Verses 23 through 25, the Hebrew writer tells us, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now it's important, the Hebrew writer tells us, for us to continue to meet together for us to continue to be together and learn together and grow together, because if we don't, we will stop doing just that. And the Hebrew writer is not talking about the occasional missing of church functions or youth group events where you're sick or you're out of town or you've got some activity that 
has been on the calendar for a long time. That's not what the Hebrew writer's talking about. The Hebrew writer here, which presumably was Paul, but we don't know for sure, is talking about the habitual missing of youth and church events. The habitual forsaking of the assembly, as some versions say. Because you can't grow with, you can't encourage, and you can't build relationships with people that you never see, with people you're never around, with people you never talk to, and with people you never spend time with. So in order to continue to grow and encourage others and be encouraged yourselves, it's important for you to be at everything you can possibly be at. The second way to get the most out of your youth group experience is to step outside your comfort zone and try new things. I found this quote as I was doing research for my lesson this week that I felt was pretty applicable to this answer. And it's by an anonymous writer, and it reads, If you want something you've never had, you've got to do something you've never done. If you've been the kind of student who comes to youth group events and you sit in the corner and you never talk to anybody and you never engage, or maybe you're the youth group student who never comes to any events. If you do, it's maybe once or twice every couple of months. And if your desire is to get the most out of your youth group experience, this author tells us you're going to have to do something different than what you've been doing in the past in order to get a different result. It's like that age-old definition of insanity, right? If you do something over and over and over again and expect different results to happen, that's the definition of insanity. The same can be said about our youth group. If you want a different outcome from your youth group experience, you're going to have to do something different in order to obtain that outcome. If your desire is to make new friends and to deepen the relationships you already have and to be heavily involved in your youth group and you're not already, you're going to have to change some things about the way you act, the way you talk, how often you're in attendance, how you engage with others. And that may mean that you become friends with different types of people that spend time hanging around different groups of people than you do. Maybe people that have different personalities than you. Not everybody can be the same. This world would be extremely boring if that was the case. And so it's important for you to step outside that comfort zone when making new friends. And I know it's human nature. When you're in a group of people, you tend to gravitate toward the people that you're like, the people that share personality traits that are similar to you, that have interests that are the same as yours. But you've got to step outside your comfort zone because you've got to keep in mind that we have a youth group that has 25 kids in it from 18 different households. That's not a ton, right? You may not find somebody that fits all of your criteria the way that you do. And so you need to step outside that comfort zone and find some different types of people. We don't have a youth group of 300, 500 kids. Then you might find 10 or 20 that are like you and have the same interests as you. But that's not the case at the Landmark Church. It may be one day, but it's not now. You've got to make friends with different types of people. But it's important to note that even though these people within your youth group are different than you, have different interests, they are Christians. And they are members of the body of Christ. And so they're different than people of the world. Yeah, you may have friends at school or in your neighborhood or in your community that are more like you, but if they're not Christians, members of the church, members of your youth group, they may not provide for you as much opportunities for growth or for maturation or strengthening yourself or upbuilding or encouraging. So you should be more willing to make friends within the youth group than outside of the youth group because of what it can do for your spiritual life. The next thing I would say when it comes to getting the most out of your youth group experience is to not judge others or put others down about their clothes or their hair or the color of their skin or the way they talk or where they live or what school they go to or what 
what possessions they have. A lot of times, kids get made fun of for the things that they can't help. They can't help their body type and shape. They can't help the color of their eyes or the possessions that their parents own or where their parents live or what their parents drive or where they go to school. They can't help that. So why make fun of them? Why judge them for it? And God doesn't care about any of those things anyways. God cares about what's in somebody's heart, what their personality is like, what their character traits are like, and how closely they walk with Him. Those are the only things that should matter to us. Not skin tone, hair color, eye color, what activities they're involved in. None of those things should matter. It helps creates a common bond when we can find similarities. But that's not a requirement for good relationships and deep friendships. And it's important that we don't judge others because you never know what that other person is going through. Maybe their parents just got a divorce and they're acting somber and sullen and they're sulking in the corner because they're going through something major. Maybe they're being bullied at school or their significant other just broke up with them. It's important not to judge them because you have no idea what's going on in their lives. It's also important not to judge because Though you may know what's going on in their lives, you never know if soon down the road you may find yourself in a similar situation. Maybe you're making fun of the way that they're reacting to a breakup with their boyfriend or girlfriend. And you're, you're thinking, I would never do that. That's ridiculous. They're being way too emotional. And you make fun of them for it. You never know until you're standing in that person's shoes. Maybe six months from now, you go through a similar situation. You just never know when you could be standing in that person's shoes. It's also important not to judge because it creates a very negative environment within the youth group. It makes people not want to be there. It makes people feel awkward or feel like they have to choose sides. Stay away from that kind of stuff. It also causes a huge problem because it could make other members of your youth group not want to come back to youth group functions, to not want to be involved in the youth group, not be open to building relationships, and to not get the most out of their youth group experience. So don't judge not only for the damage that it can do to your soul, but also for the damage that it can do to someone else and for the group as a whole. So let's open up our Bibles to Matthew chapter 7. We're going to look at verses 1 through 5. And Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 are about Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And he addresses a bunch of different topics in this sermon. Specifically, though, the one we're going to look at is the one about judging others. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. Judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And the measure with which you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that's in your brother's eye, but you don't notice the big log that's in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there's a log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, then you can see clearly enough to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not judge. Do not make fun of others. Because odds are you're dealing with your own problems, your own sin, your own temptations, your own issues. Worry more about them than you worry about judging or making fun of other teenagers within our youth group. And my fourth answer to this question about how to get the most out of your youth group experience is to actually try and make relationships. All I can do as your youth minister is to create opportunities for you to get the most out of your youth group experience. Create opportunities for you to develop deep, meaningful relationships with other teenagers at your church. I can't make you do anything. 
you can sit to the side in the back, never talk to anybody, never p participate in any activity if you want to. And you'll still technically be there. But you're not going to get anything out of it. Actually try to make relationships. Actually try to be engaged and involved. It's just like the gift that Jesus gave for us when he died on the cross. The gift of the gospel and salvation and eternal life. It's given freely, but it has to be accepted by us as individuals. The same can be said about relationships. I can create those opportunities, but until you make the most of them, until you actually try, you're not going to get much out of it. Because you only get out of it what you put into it, not what the youth minister puts into it, not the work that I put into it, or the behind-the-scenes things that I do. It's what you put into it. Don't just sit in the corner and not talk to anybody and try to get pity from other people because you're such an outcast and people should feel sorry for you. Actually work at being engaged. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen the movie We Bought a Zoo. I think it's a pretty good family-friendly movie. And there's a clip in that movie that I want to show you guys that I think fits really well within this answer about actually trying to make relationships and putting effort forth. And in this clip, a dad is talking to his son about getting up enough courage to talk to a girl, a girl that he really likes and he wish he was dating. So take a look at this clip and then we'll talk about it. What happened with you and Lily? I don't know. I guess I didn't listen to something she told me or something. I mean, I liked her. It's like you embarrass yourself if you say something, and you embarrass yourself if you don't. You know, sometimes all you need is 20 seconds of insane courage. Just literally 20 seconds of just embarrassing bravery. And I promise you, something great will come of it. That's all it takes. 20 seconds of intense, embarrassing courage to talk to somebody, to strike up a conversation, ask questions, to develop a relationship with somebody in the youth group. That's all it takes. And something amazing, something lifelong could come out of that one simple conversation. I found another quote for you guys that also fits well within this section. And it's from the book Winnie the Pooh. I know all you guys know good old Winnie the Pooh. And this quote says, You can't stay in your corner of the forest forever, waiting for others to come to you. You have to go to them sometimes. Not everything in life is going to come to you. Sometimes you have to go out and get it. And I would say more often than not, you have to go out and get it. And that goes back to our past answer about if you want something different to happen, you've got to take different steps in order to get it. In Proverbs chapter 27, King Solomon tells us that just as oils and fragrance give sensual delight, a sweet friendship refreshes the soul. And then again, Solomon tells us in chapter 24, verse 6, through an abundance of counselors, victory is won. So not only is good relationship, good friendship sweet to the soul, but it also can help bring about victory in times of temptation or defeat or conflict. Friendships are important, especially friendships within your youth group, friendships within the body of Christ. Christian, moral, virtuous friends. And my last answer to this question about how you're to get the most out of your youth group experience is to stop focusing on yourself. Not everything is about you. Your world may be about you, but this world you are just a tiny, tiny piece of. Even just take the youth group world. The 25 kids plus a guest every now and then of the youth group, you're just 1 25th of that group. I'm not saying you don't matter because you matter immensely. 
but not everything is about you. It's not what everyone can do for you or what you can get the most out of it and what entertaining things we can do that you like. Selfishness and pride are something Paul warns us about over and over and over again in his letter to the New Testament first century churches. What can you do to strengthen or encourage members of our youth group? What can you do to make sure that you're there in case they need you. And I'll give you a perfect example of this. Oftentimes throughout the last year, I've heard the following statements be made about some of our youth activities. Well, I'm not going ice skating because I don't like it. I don't wanna go camping because I don't like to spend time outdoors, especially when it's hot and there are bugs. Well, I don't wanna go because none of my friends are going. Yeah, I might go to that event, but who all's going? It shouldn't matter who all's going, and it shouldn't matter what we're going to do. It's not just about entertainment within our youth group. And I think you understood that when I gave kind of my first couple of lessons when I took over the youth group, that we're about our relationship with the Lord. We're about worshiping Him, praising Him, learning what His Word has in store for our lives. And then we're focused on service to others, whether it's with our own, in our own church or within our communities. And then we're focused on fun, entertaining activities in that order. So it's not all about entertainment. It's about building a bond within the teenagers in the youth group. And it's about doing things together and trying new things, getting outside our comfort zones, doing things that we've never done before. It's not about the event. It's about the people. It shouldn't matter where we're going. I'll give you a good example here. Mike was telling me when he was a youth minister, they used to take trips from Texas to California on mission trips for a week. But in between that week of mission trip, there were two days of driving on each end. Now, as an adult youth minister, that sounds like a nightmare. But as a teenager within a youth group that is bonded, that should sound like the funnest thing ever. And the best time you probably had would have been on the bus ride there and the bus ride back, spending it without your parents, with your friends. We should be able to get in the bus, drive to the state line of Texas and Oklahoma, and drive back. And it'd be the funnest thing in the world because you get to spend time with your brothers and sisters in Christ. It's not about what we're doing that should matter to you, but it's about the fact that we can be together in the name of the Lord. Turn to your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 4, and Paul tells us what we should keep in mind when it comes to the danger of focusing on ourselves and not others. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 4. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility... Count others more significant than yourselves. Let each one of you look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. It's not all about you. Maybe you've got friends who love to go camping, but you don't. And so when it comes time for the camping trip or the backpacking trip that we have, and all your friends want to go, but you say, I just don't like camping, so I'm not going to go. You may be missing out on a potentially really fun experience because you get to spend it with your youth group family. Maybe you're taking away from your friend's experience because it could have been so much better if you had been there. And the same can be said about any number of events that we do. Six Flags, um, service projects, that's a big one right there. Well, I don't want to spend outside working all day in the heat. It's not about you. It's about the service you can do for others within the kingdom of God. And turn for the last passage to Romans chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 10. It also talks about putting others before ourselves. Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. It's about those around you. 
and what you can do for them, how you can encourage them, and how you can strengthen them. And maybe the best way that you can do that is to be there and to listen and to engage and to talk. It's not all about you. I found this last quote here, and I don't know why I went quote crazy this week, but I found three good ones, and so I figured I'd share them. And this one by Adam Grant fits, fits well in this section. Focus your attention and energy on making a difference in the lives of others, and your success will be a byproduct. If you focus on the experience of others within our youth group and what they can get out of it and how they can be blessed and how they can be encouraged, then you will in turn be able to get the most out of your youth group experience because that means everybody will be engaged. Everybody will be included. Nobody will be judged and everybody will have a good time, learn a lot and be able to serve others. And so the note card for this week that I am still making, by the way. Every week I make the note card and I plan on taping them to the wall when we get back. But it would say something like this. If I focus on enhancing the experience of others within the youth group, I will be able to create more meaningful relationships and make the most out of my own youth group experience. We got some of those concepts from Philippians chapter 2. So in conclusion, the answer to this question is rather simple. How am I supposed to get the most out of my youth group experience? You're to be at every function, Bible class, trip that we take. You're to step outside your comfort zone and try new things. You're not to judge others or put others down. You're to actually try and make and maintain relationships and you're to stop focusing 100% on yourself. And if we all did those things, our youth group would grow, the depth of relationships would be so deep, none of us could even fathom how close we would all be. So try those in the coming year. I know the coronavirus has caused some issues in our youth functions as of late, but when we start meeting back together again, dive headlong into the youth group and give it your very best effort and give it all that you can to get the most out of your youth group experience. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson and I hope you found some things that you were able to apply to your own lives as teenagers in Kaufman County in the landmark Church of Christ youth group. Let's say a prayer real quick and then we'll be finished. Most gracious, holy, and heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that you give us to even be a part of a youth group. We thank you for the functions that we're able to be a part of and the trips we're able to take, the service projects we're able to do, the Bible classes we're able to have, the things we're able to learn, and the things we're able to do, and the things we're able to show others. We pray that you would help us to be more engaged and to be more involved and to make deeper relationships in the coming months within the youth group. We thank you for providing the leadership at the Landmark Church of Christ to help guide us and to teach us. Lord, I thank you for every single member of our youth group, and I pray that as they deal with this social isolation, they deal with school at home, they deal with a separation from friends and family, that you be with them and comfort them and strengthen them and help the time between now and the time where we can get back together be very short. We love you and we praise you, and it's through Jesus we pray. Amen. All right, guys, we'll talk to you later. Hopefully, we'll see you soon. Bye.